Do you want to do all the damage? Have you ever wondered how those FFBE YouTubers get such high numbers out of their teams but you can't seem to do the same? Well, your problem might be chaining. It certainly was for me and until I learned about it, I found it really hard to clear certain content. So in this video, I'm going to teach you the basics of chaining and you'll be crushing bosses in no time. First off, when I started playing FFBE, chaining was the hardest mechanic for me to find solid info on. I'm sure there are some good guides out there, so if you know of any, please link them in the comments below. I'm going to refer to the FFBE wiki's chaining section for some of the info in this video. The link for that will be in the description box, so please be sure to check that out. This guide is for new players, so if I omit information, it's because I'm trying to make this beginner friendly. With all of that said, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. I appreciate all the support you all show me. Chaining is a mechanic in FFBE that allows you to multiply the damage that your units are dealing by up to six times what it normally would be. This requires that you have two or more units that are chaining together with the same chaining family or that you are using a tag chaining ability like Cetra Descendant Aerith's LB for instance. In the past, units chaining together was a major way to deal damage, but now we often cap a chain with one or two big hits, uh, for example a jump or maybe a limit burst. In Clash of Wills though, we have seen a return of chaining as a form of damage and I think that's pretty neat. Before we talk more about the mechanics of chaining, let's look at an example. So in these clips, I'm going to be using Noppy and Edward and Alphonse to chain using the Stardust Ray aka SR chaining family. I'll be using Legend legendary hero Sephiroth to cap chains with his LB. In the first clip that I'll show you here, I'm going to try manually pressing the two SR skills as close together as possible. This can be very difficult and we can see that I'm only going to be able to deal about 65 million damage. You can manually press chains and some Chaining families are going to be easier than others, but honestly, if you use a macro or an app on your phone, it's going to make it easier. I can actually manually chain on my phone better than on Bluestacks, uh, but when I play on Bluestacks, I do use the macros to do it. In this next clip, I'm using the built-in macros for Bluestacks emulator to press the SR skills simultaneously, which will result in two things. One, the chain is not going to break, and two, because the frames are lined up perfectly, it's going to result in a spark chain yielding maximum damage, but more on spark chains later. Either way, you can see that the spark chain was significantly more effective. Next, I'll show Sephiroth's Brave Shift Limit Burst without any chaining. You can see that we're going to do about 45 million damage. Sephiroth's LB does not have the longest animation in the world, so it's not going to be too hard to chain uh, or to time with our chain in the next clip. In this final clip, I've timed Sephiroth's LB to hit when the chain is near the end. This will result in the largest damage bonus. Sephiroth is able to do over 200 million more damage simply because we are chaining. As you can see, chaining really makes a wild difference in the numbers that you can achieve. Let's get back to talking about how chaining works. Abilities from the same chaining families can chain together because they have the same attack patterns, i.e. the hits are going to happen at identical frames. So we're not going to go into great detail about how that all works. It's all on the wiki if you want to read about it, uh, but just know generally that if you want to chain two units together, they better have the abilities that have the same chaining family. Now you can see which family a skill belongs to by looking at the top right corner of its box, if no family is shown then it's not part of a chaining family. Here is the chaining definition from the FFBE wiki. By hitting an enemy in quick succession with different units, a chain is initiated which increases the damage of your attack. A chain starts with the second successive hit and if the same unit hits twice in a row that chain ends. So you can see why the the, the timing of the chain is so important because as soon as a unit hits twice in a row it breaks the chain uh, and that's why these chaining families come in handy is because when pressed properly two units uh, will just weave in their attacks together and they'll never go twice in a row uh, allowing you to do multiple or uh, maximum damage. So if a 
unit doesn't hit twice in a row, the chain's gonna continue. You'll also get added bonuses if that chain is elemental. So for example, if everybody's using a fire ability, then you're gonna have an elemental chain. You also get a big bonus if the chains, are, the hits are simultaneous, so there's no delay at all. They're just all happening at the same time. That's called spark chaining, and it can be very difficult to do manually, but you did see an example of it in the video. Both spark and elemental chains are gonna help the chain modifier increase to its cap more quickly. The more time that you spend at cap, the more damage each of your hits are gonna be doing. So it's not just about getting to cap so that your finisher does a bunch of damage, six times more damage. It's also about having your chaining contribute to as much damage as it can, uh, especially in game modes like Clash of Wells. If you're curious about the chain cap modifier, it's that gauge that was filling up in the top right of the screen in the clips that shows it going up to 300%, but the modifier actually can go up to 600% uh, and do six times the amount of damage for a unit. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in just a second here. I wanted to put a section in this video talking about the modifier cap and how it affects damage dealers, because that's a question that we often get on Reddit in the daily help thread. So I'm gonna teach some new vocabulary to some of you here. So uh, if you have any questions, again, the comments are there for you. Uh, so when you see somebody say T, DW, that's true dual wield. And those are units that use two weapons. Now, uh, they get a passive in their kit. All the new TDW units get a passive in their kit that gives them a 200% increase to the chain cap modifier, meaning that they are going to do six times the amount of damage when the chain modifier cap is at its cap, when it's at max, when you're chaining. However, TDH, or true double hand, which is when you hold one weapon with two hands, uh, those units typically have a passive in their kit that gives them only a 100% increase uh, to their chain modifier cap. This means that TDH units only get a five times multiplier uh, when the chain is at max compared to the six times multiplier that the TDH, or sorry, TDW units get. So don't worry, we have ways of fixing that. Savior of Souls Lightning, which is a Neo Vision unit, has a uh, Super Trust Master Materia, the indestructible light, uh, that will increase the modifier of a chain um, cap by 100%. So because of this, her Materia is highly sought after to put on units like Legendary Hero Sephiroth, and a lot of people will recommend to you that you get multiple copies of her STMR. However, it's even easier now because we have more ways to increase the chain cap for TDH units. Clash of Wills allows us to craft two customizable items, a helm and a cloth, or cloth, uh, that will be customizable uh, to a form that gives you another 100% increase to the chain cap modifier. Now, you can't go over 600%, you can just get up to 600%. So giving these chain cap modifier items or materials to a double hand, uh, dual, sorry, a dual wielding unit will not help them. They're already at 600%, don't give them that equipment. Um, but if you have someone like Sephiroth or any other unit that is true double hand, they're using a two-handed weapon, then they very well may need one of those pieces of equipment or materia so that they can get that damage increase. Now in a future video, I'm gonna go over in detail how to equip your units and power them up for more damage, but for now, just know that TDW and TDH units have different chain cap modifiers and that TDH units need extra help getting that extra damage. When you look at new banners, you can see if units have similar chaining families to the units you already own. And if they don't match your units, you might not be able to chain easily with them. However, that might actually be a reason to pull a new unit to start diversifying the amount of chain families you have access to. These days, most units seem to have either the Bolting Strike or Stardust Ray chaining families. Collab units tend to have the Absolute Mirror of Equity chaining family, although that is much less common uh, nowadays. And that kind of bums me out because collab units typically won't be Clash of Wills units since JP doesn't have that game mode. So how am I supposed to get another morale chainer to work with my Eldrin? Well, that's it. That's my beginner's guide to chaining. And if you have any questions, please ask in the comment section below. You can also join my Discord with the link in the description. And we have an FFBE help channel that is a specific channel. You can ask as many questions as you want. Myself and other players are gonna be there to answer your questions in more depth. Hopefully this video was useful for you uh, and good luck taking on all the content that FFBE has to offer.